Hello, my name is Tom McLaughlin. I am an author and an illustrator, and I'm going to be talking to you a little bit about what I do. I'm going to be sort of reading, reading from a book and doing some drawing for you. Um, so yeah, I just want to say hi. Um, sorry, I can't be there. Um, we're in a brave new world where I can sort of do it all via um, phones and iPads and things like that. So you know, I could be there in spirit. Um, actually, I kind of like technology. Um, you can see here a few of the books. That I uh, write and illustrate. So I've basically got two jobs. I'm a writer and an illustrator, so I come up with stories. I also come up with the pictures for my stories. Um, but they, everything starts out on a blank piece of paper for me. Um, whether it's a blank piece of paper that exists on an exercise book, in a sketchbook, or on a computer screen, uh, as you'll see later. But it's still a blank piece of paper. Um, and it's the most important thing I will ever, ever use. All my books, all my ideas, they start out as a little idea, a little drawing that becomes uh, a story that maybe becomes a joke that turns into something else. Um, you can see here a few of my drawings. Um, this is something I like to call a brain dump, um, which is basically sort of me downloading the contents of my brain. It's something that I like to do. This isn't particularly for anything. It's not for work. It's just drawing for the sake of drawing. Um, if you have a, a, a sketchbook, you're never quite sure what to do. You've got a big piece of paper, I'm not quite sure what to fill it with. Just fill it with loads of little drawings, anything you like. It could be sort of realistic, just from your head. Um, there's loads of little stuff in here. And sometimes if I'm, I'm thinking about what I want to do, what I want to write about, then I can sometimes just look at this drawing and go, oh yeah, I like that idea, that little ape with the banana. Maybe I can turn that into something. But um, I like to say, I do like technology. You can see here we've got um, got an iPad and with a tripod and a phone I can make a little kind of animation studio. So you might see a fruit bowl with a banana and a lime in it and think, oh, I need to go to the shops. But for me, it's an epic battle between good and evil. As an author and an illustrator, I'm a little bit like a collector. I'm always on the lookout for good ideas and I'm always on the lookout for stories. So even just a fruit bowl with a banana and a lime in it, I can see a story happening that I can then take a photograph of, that I can then turn into a drawing. Um, I do two sorts of books. I do picture books for uh, little ones and sort of chapter books for older ones. I'm going to be reading to you um, from the Accidental series. Um, this is probably the most popular series. It's been sort of translated into, I think, about 12 or 13 different languages around the world. Um, I've done lots. I started out with the accidental Prime Minister um, and being an author and an illustrator it's a bit like having a time machine and a dressing up box. You get to be all these different places and get to do all these different things, you know. So I got to be Prime Minister for a bit, which was great. Then they said, what else do you want to write about? Um, so I thought, I want to be a secret agent. So I wrote a book called The Accidental Secret Agent. Um, I get to do all these things. I get to be a rock star, a president. I haven't quite become a billionaire in real life, so I get to be a billionaire in, in, when I'm writing The Accidental Billionaire. But it is a fantastic job, and I love it. Um, I never thought I would end up being an author and an illustrator, um, because um, I have dyslexia. So for a long time when I was at school, I didn't think I was very good at English because I'd do a piece of work and I'd get it handed back and it had loads of scribbles and red marks on it and make loads of spelling mistakes. It took me a long time to realise that spelling is important, but the most important thing is coming up with a really good idea. And even if you're dyslexic, doesn't mean to say that you can't come up with really good ideas. Um, so yeah, when I write my stories, I still make lots of spelling mistakes. I can get um, people to help me with the spelling. But I just want you to know that if, you're, if you struggle with writing and reading, then it doesn't matter. It doesn't mean to say that you can't be an author. Um, it just means that you're not very good at reading or you might have to struggle with spelling. Um, I really struggle with reading when I'm reading my books. I'll tell you a true story. The Accidental Prime Minister was my first ever um, chapter book. I was really proud. Um, and this did really well, and they said, we're going to turn it into an audio book. Would you like to come and read it? So I, I thought, yeah, that'd be fantastic. So I took my son to the recording studio, um, started to read this. I was a bit worried because I'm dyslexic. I was going to make a few mistakes. Um, started to read it, got a little bit nervous, started to make a few mistakes, started to make a few more mistakes. 
eventually the boss of the recording studio tapped on the on the window and called me in said listen tom you are really good at writing books you're really good at drawing the pictures for books but you struggle with reading a bit don't you i went yeah i do i'm dyslexic i, I, I tried my hardest but I'm, it's just not that it's, it's something i struggle with i'm never going to be really good at it i'm really sorry he went it's okay yeah we're going to get someone else in to read your book for you I got fired from my own book. <gasps> it was awful. It was embarrassing in front of my son as well. Do you know what I did? Went to KFC and got a bucket of chicken this big. Um, but I learned something that day that actually, that reading is always going to be a bit of a struggle, but I'm always going to struggle with spelling. And dyslexia is something that's never going away, but that's okay. Dyslexia means that I have quite a good brain. It's good at coming up with loads of ideas. It just means that getting them down can be a struggle. But it's well worth it. So if there are any people out there who struggle, doesn't mean to say you can't be a super duper author uh, like me. So the book I'm going to read to you is The Accidental Prime Minister and it's all about a boy called Joe. Joe is a school kid um, and he finds out that his local park is going to be closed down and this makes Joe really really sad. He loves playing the, at the park, uh, he plays football with his best mate AJ and his mum works at the park park it's her job to kind of make sure that all the plants are all healthy and tidy and no dogs have been doing their business on the grass so yeah the park's been closed down his mum's going to lose his job and he's going to have nowhere to play football he also finds out that the prime minister not a very nice man called percival t duck home is on the way to his school for a little visit so he thinks i'll go and have a chat with the prime minister see if i can persuade him to keep the park open because that's what Prime Ministers do. They sort of help, don't they, when there's a problem. So you think, I'll go and have a chat with him, talk to the Prime Minister, everything will be fine. So that's what I'm going to read for you now. So settle down, buckle in for a bit of the accidental Prime Minister by me. By the time AJ and Joe got to school, there was a huge crowd already there of excited school children, policemen, TV reporters and cross-looking members of the public. There at the front of the crowd stood Mr Brooks, the headmaster. AJ nudged Joe. Mr Brooks looks, well, really weird. Has he combed his hair differently? Mr Brooks had indeed combed his hair differently, but that wasn't it. Suddenly Joe figured it out. I know, I know, he's smiling. Oh yeah, AJ realised. It's really creepy, isn't it? He never does that. What's going on, Mr Brooks? said Joe. Mr Brooks sighed impatiently. Oh no, not you two. I warn you, any mischief and you'll be for the high jump. Is the Prime Minister coming, sir? AJ asked, looking at the big black limo that had just pulled up behind the police motorcycles. Yes, it was supposed to be a secret, you know, for security reasons, seeing how he's pretty much hated by most people these days. But some buffoon must have told the papers. I mean, look at all these cameras, he said, suddenly grinning and running a licked finger over one eyebrow. Ding. The doors of the black limo opened and out stepped a stout man in a mud-coloured suit. He had a red wobbly face, in the middle sat a bulbous nose like a cherry on a particularly disgusting trifle. The man dab dabbed his sweaty face with a hanky and attempted to flatten his hair with a clammy hand. The man in question was Percival T. Duckholm. He was the Prime Minister of Great Britain, and it's fair to say, one of the most disliked men in the land. He was the kind of man who would not only sell his grandmother for a quick buck, but he'd also try and sell your grandmother too. In fact, if you've got a moment, I suggest you give her a quick ring and tell her not to answer the door to any trifle-faced Prime Ministers. Percival T. Duckholm was also one of the rudest men you're ever likely to meet. He liked to shout at people. In fact, shouting was his most favourite thing in the world. He'd shout in the morning at breakfast at his poor wife and pale children. Then he'd have a bath and shout a bit in there. Then he'd get dressed and shout about how he couldn't find his socks. And then he'd go to work and shouty, shouty, shouty until lunch before it all got too much and he had to have a little nap before home time. You may well say, surely it can't be this bad. Surely someone must like him. I mean, he did manage to become Prime Minister after all. Well, the simple truth is that the man he was up against was even more loathsome. I know, it's hard to believe, but let me tell you about Melvin Thwick, a man so obnoxious that you ever got to meet him, it would take all your strength not to vomit through your nose just to be in the same room as him. He had greasy hair, terrible breath, and dandruff so bad you'd think winter had come early, looking at the state of his shoulders. 
He picked his nose with all the eagerness and desperation of a man looking for loose change down the back of the sofa, and when he spoke it sounded like farts. He had the charm and manners of a drunk pig feeding at the trough. He hated pretty much everyone and anything, and he made no secret of trying to hide it. So there you have it. That's a very short story of how Percival T. Duckholm became Prime Minister. He just happened to find an opponent, an opponent even more repulsive than him. So anyway, where were we? Oh yes, Percival, Percival T. Duckholm emerged from the car, waved and smiled at the crowds, even though no one was cheering him. In fact, they were booing him. Joe looked round and saw that the mob had gathered. The more Percival smiled, the more they shouted and wailed at him. Resign, you lump! One angry lady yelled. You're a crook! Another man shouted. This just seemed to whip the reporters and cameramen into more of a frenzy. Percival D. Duckholm ignored the crowds and headed for Mr Brooks, the headmaster. What a marvellous school you have here! He shouted. Oh, thank you. Would you like to meet some of the children? Oh, no. It's bad enough that I have to spend time with my own kids, Percival said. Joe pushed his way to the front of the crowd. This was his chance. If he figured, if he just explained about the park to the Prime Minister, he would fix it. I mean, that's what Prime Ministers do, isn't it? They fix things. Uh, Mr Prime Minister, sir, can I ask you a question? Joe said timidly. Oh, the PM shrieked. Get away from me, you horrible creature. I just wanted to ask you a question. It's about our park. You just wanted to belch a question about a shark? Speak up, lad, the Prime Minister shouted. No, I wanted to ask a question about our park. Our park is going to be closed down and they're going to build a new sh big shiny tower on it. By now, everyone was listening. Even Mr Brooks was staring at Joe, a mixture of bewilderment and anger on his face. Well, it was mostly anger, maybe 5% bewilderment. Joe wasn't used to people actually listening to him. He normally liked to sit quietly and let AJ take the lead. But he knew this could be his only chance to save his mum's job. Ah, the Prime Minister says, smiling, at last, a sensible question. Yes, it is true. We have closed down that grotto old park to build a big shiny new tower. That's what this government's all about, building shiny new things. No need to thank me, Sonny Jim. The PM gave Joe a toothy grin, ruffled his hair and walked away. What an idiot, AJ said, looking at the Prime Minister. Hey Joe, are you all right? But Joe wasn't all right. He was about a zillion miles from all right. His blood was hot and full of anger. How could someone so important be so useless? I have to stop there, but Joe has a bit of a shout at the Prime Minister, tells him a thing or two about what he would do as if he was in charge of the country. This thing gets videoed, the whole thing goes viral, and before Joe knows it, he's like the most famous boy in the world. And suddenly people are coming up to him and saying, you know what, you should be Prime Minister, you've got lots of good ideas. And Joe's like, what? I can't be Prime Minister, I'm like a kid. Anyway, AJ has a word with him and explains that maybe if Joe became Prime Minister, then they'd probably get to live in a big mansion and they wouldn't have to do maths homework every Monday. And Joe thinks, do you know what? I will become Prime Minister, it sounds like a laugh. So he comes Prime Minister, comes up with all kinds of crazy laws. Um, he uh, replaces the old fashioned handshake with the more modern fist bump. Um, he puts swimming pools on trains because why not? And he flies around on a jetpack. Um, but then something bad happens, but I won't spoil it in case you want to read the book. Hope you enjoyed that.